In today's video, I'm going to look at two objections to the idea that growth hacking applies to just about any business. The first is what I call the I'm Muskoka material, not Musk material argument. And that is that I don't want to be growing and growing and growing my business until I'm working 80 hours a week. My reaction to that is that growth isn't simply about becoming incredibly wealthy or building a very large company. It's about getting to the point where you have enough exposure and enough reputation and enough skill to charge more for your time. And that would mean that you're able to spend more time doing the things you want above and beyond just working. For example, consider this chart. The bottom left of this chart is the shortage of clients and the shortage of time. This is a circumstance you'll probably encounter when you're just starting your business, especially as a side hustle. Um, you're working a 40 hour week, you've got the commute on either side. So you don't have an infinite amount of time to devote to your side hustle. Of course, you don't have a lot of clients either. So it's an early days situation and you will pretty much work for anything because you want the exposure. The problem is that a lot of people will pursue their side hustle and get to a certain point and decide, okay, I'm going to be full time now. I'm going to quit my day job and I'm going to work this entrepreneurial hustle that I've been doing on the side full time. If you don't, if you take that step too early, you can find yourself in the bottom right of this quadrant. And that's a dangerous place to be. That's when you're saying to everybody, I will do almost anything to keep the lights on. It doesn't matter what the price is. You don't have enough clients to sustain your business economically. What you want to do is go from the shortage of clients and shortage of time to plenty of clients and a shortage of time. What happens then is that you're able to say to clients, this is the rate and they'll go, Oof, I don't know if that's a lot of money but okay, because your reputation, your skills, what you provide in the way of value is so high, but they know you're not just sitting waiting by the phone for them to call. A lot of businesses find themselves trapped in that diagonal between bottom left and top right, where the amount of time they have available matches the number of clients they have, but they aren't able to say, I need to get paid more for my time. What you want to do is move from that side hustle quadrant, the bottom left, and move up to the top left. That's when life is enjoyable. That's when you can charge for your time appropriately. So when I say grow your business, when I say growth hack, it's not about taking on the extra burdens that we're talking about in the top right necessarily. If you want to be Elon Musk, that's the way to go. You work harder, you build a bigger business, you work harder still, you build a bigger business. That's fine. A lot of people, that's what they eat up. They love the challenge of that and they love getting to a position where they have their hands in some enormous levers. Elon Musk can make billion dollar decisions. Very few of us can do that. Some of us don't really want to. We'd rather have a day off at the cottage. If that's your plan in life, then you want to grow your client list, but you don't want to necessarily grow your business. You still need growth hacking to do that. Another common objection to the idea of growth hacking is the implication that you should just do everything better. It can be daunting when you look at the literature and the stuff on, on the web about growth hacking. If you go to 20 different websites, you're going to find a hundred different techniques on each one of them. And so the idea that you have to improve everything about your business, your website, your, your uh, social media, how you answer the phone, how you go after people, you know, by calling them or how you greet them in your store, what your packaging is, what your logos are. It can be, it can make your head explode. But don't forget the other part of growth hacking. Growth hacking is about finding the most important lever to pull at any given moment. And it doesn't even require you to know for sure. You just have to have an inkling and then you have to have the time and energy to create an experiment to find out if you're right. So to put this into perspective, think about the five whys. The five whys, the question why, asked five times in a row is a well-worn problem-solving technique. 
The idea is that you can get to the root cause of a problem by asking the question why five times in a row. Let's take an example. So imagine that your customer base isn't growing as fast as you would like. This is an acquisition problem. So the question you start with, the first why, is why don't we acquire enough customers? And then the answer could be because not enough potential customers see what we have to offer. Okay, so that's the first why. The second why, based on that because, is why don't enough potential customers see what we offer? And then the answer to that could be because the cost to run our ads is so high. And then you work your way through several whys until you get to the bottom, and then it's because our value proposition is weak. That's the fifth why. That's the root cause of the problem. The thing about the five whys technique is it's often presented as a very linear thing, and each question flows from one to the other with precision and certainty. And, you know, after five, you come to a root cause. It's never, real life is messy and it's never that simple. Certainly, if I was to go through those questions for my business, I'd get to the second or third and I'd have to start making up answers. Making up answers, the fancy word for that, the scientific word for that is hypothesizing. So you may not know, for example, that the reason the cost to run your ads is so high is that too few people click through, as I said in this example. There could be a whole bunch of reasons why it's expensive. You could be hitting up, you could be targeting the wrong people. You could be running the wrong type of uh, uh, graphics in your ad. Your copy could be terrible, but now you need to come up with a theory. You don't need to test each and every theory that's available to you. You can pick one. So let's take another example. So again, the question is, why don't we acquire enough new customers? And then the answer is because potential customers who visit our website bounce, which is to say they come, they don't stay very long because they don't see what they, they want to see and they click back and they go somewhere else. So the natural second question is, why do potential customers who visit our website bounce? And the answer at this point could be because mm, I don't know. Okay, so now you're forced to speculate. That's okay. That's part of growth hacking. You don't need to know the answer and you also don't need to argue. So this second example is interesting because when you get to the, even the second why, you're forced to speculate. And now you have to ask questions like, is it because our website is ugly? Is it because our messaging is wrong? Is it because our website is confusing? Is it because it, the messaging it doesn't match up with what our ads are sending people to our website for. There could be a million reasons and you can imagine what this meeting is like, especially if it's not just you and your head, but you and your startup found your, your um, startup co-founder or your partner in business or your partner in life, you're working on this business together. And now it's starting to feel like you're calling each other's work into question. That's not a pleasant meeting to be at. This is why taking a deep breath and saying, we don't really know why, but let's look at some likely solutions or likely reasons, again, why and because, and then test, come up with a hypothesis and then test. So let's say that we think maybe the look of the website is what's causing the problem. Let's try changing the look of the website. Preferably what you would do is you would construct two landing pages so that you would drive traffic to those landing pages and they would have everything else being pretty much the same, but the look would be different. If you target people to those pages, and it's, e it's much easier to make a page than it is to make an entire website. So start humble. Start with just one page, drive traffic to them both, and see if there's a difference. If you get a better response to the new version, then you know you're onto something. And let's say you make a 25% improvement. Great. Let's try something else as well. Maybe we can get a 30%, 40%, 50%. Chances are what you'll find is that if you keep pulling that lever, you'll get diminishing returns. That eventually the, what the web page you, uh, the second last web page and the last web page you test have such similar results, there's no point in continuing. Great. Now you've got the look of your website or at least that page for that purpose nailed down. Then it's time to look at something else. You may have got to the point where your bounce rate is acceptable, or you may want to look for another theory and work on that. But look at what we're doing here. 
We don't have to feel overwhelmed because we have a clear objective at any given moment. We don't need to feel like we're at odds with our colleagues because these are just theories. If it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. We don't need to argue. We can find out together and we can all be wiser at the end of it. And you're making progress all the time. The third thing about growth hacking that I find really exciting and why I think it has such broad applicability is that it, it's willing to admit or invites us to be willing to admit that we don't know the answer. So just like in that previous example where I said there could be any one of many reasons why people are bouncing from our website. If we're not willing to speculate and if we're not willing to experiment, then we're going to fixate on the metrics we can control. And so it reminds me of this joke where uh, the guy's walking his dog and he stumbles across his neighbor who's standing under a streetlight. And he says, you know, what's going on? You OK? And he says, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for my keys. And the dog owner says to the neighbor, well, did you lose them around here? And he goes, I don't know, but the light here is better. OK, so don't be like that neighbor. You don't want to fix it on metrics that you already know, that you already have controls in place to measure. You want to have an open mind and say, what could the reasons be? And if we've tried the old metrics, if we tried the old techniques to improve the metric and we're not getting anywhere, we have to be open to the idea of shedding light somewhere else because the keys to the growth of your business could be somewhere other than where you're already looking. So I decided to record this video because there are these two common objections to the idea of growth hacking. The first is that what's the point? I don't really want to grow. You don't need to grow a huge organization. You just need to grow your opportunities and growth hacking can do that. The other is that growth hacking can be bewildering, that it can be daunting, that there's just too many things to try. That's actually its greatest strength. There's no end to what you can try, but you don't have to do everything at once. You can prioritize and you can pick your battles and you can demonstrate to yourself and everybody you work with that you're able to make progress. That's why I'm excited about growth hacking and I hope you will be too. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and I would be grateful if you've subscribed. I'd like to see you again. Thank you.